Hello friends. In my previous video, I started discussion on DFT and I have told several concepts like zero padding, which is very important concept in computing DFT as a close approximation of uh, DTFT. Those things I have discussed. Now in my this video, I am going to discuss another very important concept, okay, related to DFT. So here I have written one simple code to compute the DFT of cos 5 omega n, okay. So CLC clear all, close all, if you want you can write warning off also. 256 point DFT I want to compute, so capital N I have taken 256 and you know uh, if n is given then small n will vary from 0 to capital N minus 1. If we don't want to use 0 padding, okay then in that case same length should be given okay omega equal to 2 pi by capital n smallest increment in the dft as you know and i am taking the frequency in radian digital frequency in radian as 5 omega okay and then i am computing the fft 256.50 and then k also varying from 0 to capital n minus 1 and then first i am plotting the x which is this signal and then plotting absolute part of capital x with respect to various values of k so let me run this code. So if I run this, I will be getting this kind of waveform. This is our cosine signal in discrete domain and this is our magnitude response. If I zoom the magnitude response, I told you that up to capital N by 2 should be our point of interest, 0 to capital N by 2. Further, same thing will be get uh, repetition. Okay, so I am considering the 0 to N by 2 part and we are completely understanding that in this range 0 to n by 2 here only we are getting this spike okay so we will consider this spike and this spike is arising at k equal to 5 if k equal to 5 so the frequency corresponding to this is nothing but 2 pi by capital n into 5 which is our frequency we have taken here see 5 omega where omega is 2 pi by n so this is nothing but cos 2 cos 5 into 2 pi by capital n into n so that our frequency in this case is 5 into 2 pi by capital n and from the waveform also we can conclude that as c i have just shown you the k value we are getting at n equal to k equal to 5 the peak we are getting at k equal to 5 so that our frequency is 2 pi by capital n into 5 okay so this is what we are getting but generally whenever we plot some waveform or get the response we are not habituated to calculate again and again like this we want that uh, minus pi to pi frequency response where in the middle part zero will be there okay and we will directly get our frequency value here what we are doing here we are getting k value from the k value we are determining what is the omega like that and again if you observe here one pattern is there see i told you zero is lower frequency and then in the middle part up to capital n by 2 it goes up to n by 2 that is higher frequency part right so let me go to ppt and show you so as you know that uh, th this is the dft we start sampling uh, in the frequency domain 0 then 2 pi by n as omega increases and we can go up to maximum pi okay so maximum frequency is 0 to uh, that is maximum frequency is pi possible maximum frequency then after that pi to 3 by pi to 2 to 2 pi as the frequency as we are moving like this this basically decreases the frequency because 2 pi means 0 only right so that means uh, 2 pi means nothing but indicating the dc frequency so again pi to 2 pi when we are moving frequency decreases right i hope you can understand or you can understand simply like this 0 to pi frequency increases so here in the opposite side the reverse thing will do so from pi to 0 when you are moving obviously frequency will decrease like that also you can interpret this concept so what we are getting basically these things i have shown you so what i am telling 0 to capital n by 2 capital n by 2 corresponding to pi 0 to pi frequency increases that means here 0 is low frequency then n by 2 high frequency component and n minus 1 is arising where See, n minus 1 is corresponding to this point, 2 pi by capital N into n minus 1, which is close to DC. That means here, pi 2, when we are moving to 2 pi by capital N into n minus 1, again, frequency decreasing, right? So, in the overall spectrum of the DFT, what is happening? Here, there is low frequency, and as we move towards pi, at n by 2, we are getting pi, which is belonging to high frequency, and again, when... 
uh, further we will go to n minus 1 that is k equal to n minus 1 and this point is corresponding to 2 pi by capital n into n minus 1 there also frequency decreases okay so basically this is low frequency so low high low like this we are getting in the uh, response of our dft but generally how we are habituated in the continuous domain here high frequency will be there and in the negative side and then some zero or dc frequency will be there and again in this side some high frequency will be there okay that is just the reverse of what we are getting in the dft we are generally habituated with this kind of nature high and low and close to dc or zero and from zero again if frequency increases we will go to high right that means in the both side of zero as we move on we will get higher frequency this is how generally we do but we are not getting that thing in the dft but we want to get, get this only that is our uh, uh, the particular domain where, where we are comfortable that we want to achieve okay so that modification how we can do let me show you these things i have discussed in my previous video not repeating these things yeah so what i have told you low to high this is our uh, previously known concept 0 to n by 2 but what we are getting now we are getting high to low as we move uh, from n by 2 to n minus 1 that's what I have told you now right now I want high first then it will move to 0 that is this picture high frequency component that is suppose this is my frequency axis and this is DC uh, as we move from uh, 0 to left side or 0 to right side the frequency should increase like this part is also high this is high this is only low but we are having this one in our DFT that is low frequency first then in the middle high frequency and then again low how we can convert from this figure to this figure see very simple swap left hand and right hand side if you swap what will happen observe carefully this high low will come here and this low high will come here now these two low is merged and high is both in the both end this is what is our target so by simply swapping in this fashion we can achieve this one okay well very simple now what will be our new frequency range in radian in this particular domain what is our new frequency range let us try to understand see i told you this point where in DFT this is corresponding to k equal to 0 and at n by 2 we were getting high frequency and again uh, we were moving towards pi actually not to 2 pi exactly that was 2 pi by capital N into n minus 1 in the right hand side maximum value whatever we are getting but here for simplicity I am taking 2 pi so now you can see after swapping you just put the same value so pi to 2 pi will come here and 0 to pi will come here so 0 and 2 pi are same only those will simply merge no problem in that but here pi here pi this is not possible right so frequencies in the frequency axis in the far away from 0 in the left hand side also you are getting pi and far away in the right hand side also you are getting pi this should not happen when you are moving from 0 to left hand side you should get minus value so symmetric to pi here we should get minus pi right so simply minus pi so this is our new frequency range that is minus pi to pi okay so uh, as a whole what we are telling so this is our target of interest that is minus pi to pi achieving this one okay now how we can do that so obviously here also what i told you that this is not exactly pi this will be approximately 2 pi by capital n into n minus 1 what we are getting maximum in the right hand side so same concept we will uh, move further like here whatever frequency will get maximum that will not be exactly pi that will be what that will be uh, 2 pi by capital n into n minus 1 whatever you are getting there minus pi that is we are shifting our axis by a pi in the left hand side so this is not exactly pi this will be this one that is 2 pi by capital n into n minus 1 into pi okay so from minus pi to 2 pi by capital n into n minus 1 minus pi will be our point of interest so see initially our range was 0 to 2 pi now we are getting from minus pi to pi how we can achieve this simple subtract pi 
with all the points okay so omega equal to our new omega will be previous omega minus pi okay now how the swapping this is how we can do swapping in the frequency but how to swap in the magnitude for that in matlab there is one built-in function f50 shift f50 shift rearrange the fourier transformation x by shifting the zero frequency component to the center of the array that is c a 50 shift swap the left and right hand side of x okay so in this way our job will be done using a 50 shift now range of digital frequency in radian also i am calculating here to plot instead of k our new frequency axis will be directly omega that is our digital frequency so our digital frequency c k varies from 0 to capital minus capital n minus 1 and our digital frequency is 2 pi by capital n into k so our digital frequency vary from 0 to 2 pi by capital n into n minus 1 okay so code for digital frequency will be what simple omega will be equal to c i told you 0 to 2 pi by 2 pi by uh, what we are getting here 2 pi by uh, capital n into n minus 1 right so 2 pi minus of 2 pi by n we can say like this right i hope you, you can understand this this just i have done one simple simplification step here okay so uh, 0 to see here what i have done just simple uh, simplification 2 pi by capital n into n minus 1 is nothing but 2 pi minus of 2 pi by capital n right so that's what i have written here uh, 2 pi minus of 2 pi by capital n and increment will be what see in between each successive sample the increment is 2 pi by capital n so that increment should be 2 pi by capital n okay see 2 pi by capital n i hope you are understanding this now let us directly go to the code so modified code will be some extra line we will add up to this same as earlier 2 pi by capital n and cos 5 omega n and a50 of x comma 256 and then new omega range i am defining as i have shown you in my formula also and then i have to shift by minus pi unit in the left hand side to get the exact plot and subplot i am plotting the main sequence and then i am using a50 shift to get that shift the original spectrum now if i do evaluate selection see what we are getting we are getting our cosine signal as uh, in the sequence domain or time domain but in this spectrum we are getting the exact values now see our sequence was cos 5 omega n right what is 5 omega okay let me just verify once is it cos uh, cos 5 omega let me perform again uh, 5 into 2 into pi that is 3.14 so 5 into 2 into pi divided by 256 okay what we are getting 0 0.1226 and what we are getting in this spectrum see after 0 0.1 nearly 0 0.1 something you can understand that this is approximately 0 0.1226 but 0 0.12 we are getting one peak and here also in the negative side after uh, minus of 0 0.1 in the left hand side nearly at minus of 0 0.12 we are getting another peak okay so this is what we are getting exact spectrum according to theory i hope you have understood this this is how you have to use a50 shift in my next video i will show you another example okay thank you for watching